and welcome to our breakout room. I'm Craig Scott, Mayor Torbay, Chair of UMC. This morning, we have a presentation from MNL's Kathleen Perowick. Kathleen coordinates Building Asset Management, also known as BAMNL. Her presentation today is titled Building Asset Management in Newfoundland, a growing community of practice. Kathleen, take it away. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks so much, Craig. I'll just uh, share my screen now for you. There we go. The, everybody's seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I guess we, we we can all agree that it's been it's been quite the year. Uh, plenty of big changes and a lot of uh, doing things differently in our sector, and that goes for our MNL programs as well. Our asset management program turned three this summer in the midst of the pandemic and just as we were trying to figure out how to complete the delivery of our asset management training with Dr. Cooper and get our new asset management officer, Jason Garland, up and running. Uh, Jason's actually going to be delivering a session on the asset management readiness scale uh, a little later in the conference and I, I hope you'll make an effort to take that one in. So with the dust having settled a bit now, whoops, uh -oh. so with the dust having settled a bit now, an update on our progress and plans was in order. But rather than talking about the what's and how's, I thought I'd focus today on the who's and the bigger picture for MNL as we build new capacity to do this important work here. Oops. An asset management community of practice for Newfoundland and Labrador has been a BAM program objective from the start. But what does that actually mean? Community of practice is, is a term that refers to a group of people who share a concern or a passion for something that they do and learn how to do it better as they interact, uh, you know, having, having conversations on a regular basis. Uh, you might be thinking that our municipal sector is already full of communities of practice, and you wouldn't be wrong. Uh, membership organizations like MNL, PMA, and the Newfoundland and Labrador Association of Fire Services certainly gather folks with local government interests or careers, and also foster the kind of sharing that help us all do uh, what we do better. In the context of doing something new though, especially where it affects the whole of an organization, the creation of a community of practice can itself be a target, a means of supporting the creation of knowledge and systems that we don't have as yet, which has certainly been the case for towns in this province. Nobody here was doing the kind of asset management planning called for under the current gas tax agreement when we started this program. Plus, our circumstances are quite different here than for most of the municipalities in other parts of Canada, even other parts of the Atlantic region. So we really had to build something that would be right for us. So we've had three rounds of BAM funded uh, under the Municipal Asset Management Program to date. Uh, and all of them have been Round one looked at basic outreach, introducing some key FCM tools, such as the Asset Management Readiness Scale and commencing our network building. Round two made the shift into more targeted peer-based learning uh, integrating opportunities uh, afforded by some of the other programs we had, like the Big Data, Big Ideas uh, project uh, that our CEO was leading at the time. It was also a period where we worked more closely with the province as they contracted a consultant team to prepare their AM uh, asset management toolkit. We've just wrapped up uh, round two, however, and uh, we're still waiting for that official release of the provincial toolkit. Round three is seeing us loop back to the asset management readiness scale, and we're asking all towns to complete it and share their progress with us so we can better identify who needs what kind of assistance. We have a dedicated asset management officer now, and Jason's only a phone call away. With the benefit of two rounds of BAM under our belts now, we know a lot more of us have some common understandings about what asset that management entails for their organizations and the types of things that the asset management process takes into account. And we do have people in municipalities all around the province now who are getting asset management underway. They're the core of our emerging asset management community of practice. 
still, they're just part of a larger system. Let's think for a moment now about some of the other folks that we need to support this new area of practice here. There are many other relationships we've built along the way. We've already touched on the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Municipal Asset Management Program. We've certainly benefited greatly from their practitioner networks and resources. And you, as, as municipalities, have benefited from access to their direct funded stream. Uh, and just, just so that you're aware, there's going to be one more uh, call coming up in January of uh, 2021. So keep your eyes peeled for the updates on that front. Similarly, our partnership with the Canadian Network of Asset Managers has provided context, experienced contacts, and plenty of best practice resources and other opportunities to hear from others engaged in municipal asset management. Many of you probably recognize this asset management 101 primer of theirs. We've distributed it as a getting started resource for some time now. St. John's was to have hosted CNAM's uh, annual national conference this year, uh, but COVID. <laughs> uh, so it was among the very first municipal events to go virtual, and we had a really good showing of uh, Newfoundland community attendees. Our provincial government is obviously a key player as well. Uh, there are gas tax administrators, and in that role, they'd be expected to provide leadership in the form of an overarching asset management framework, as well as guidance materials. Unfortunately, as earlier mentioned, we are still waiting. They have, however, been supportive, but solid asset management leadership has been lacking. Hopefully, this is something that we'll see change under the new administration. The province has been engaged in some promising collaborative efforts as well, uh, such as this Building Climate Resilience series of workshops. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, which have all been videotaped and are available to view online. And then, of course, there are our other partners. Institutions like Memorial University and the College of the North Atlantic, who have researchers from fields such as civil engineering, business, computer science that are available to work on sector challenges with us. Training modules that we've just concluded were developed in partnership with Dr. Tom Cooper of Memorial University's Business School. And those materials will go on to form a part of MNL's upcoming core municipal training delivered in partnership with the College of the North Atlantic. Then there's the Conservation Corps. They have been providing direct planning support to groups of smaller towns, bringing the climate change conversation into asset management using the seven steps toolkit and other resources that MNL has had a hand in developing over the years. We've just written a support letter for a proposed expansion of their efforts. So please contact me if you've got a town that might be interested in getting involved. I'm going to give a shout out, of course, now to, uh, to Brigus, Clarks Beach, Cupids, and South River. Hopefully a few of you are, uh, are going to be taking this one in. Um, their next session is coming up now on November 25th, and they'll actually be looking at wildfire risk uh, during that one. And another NGO partnership we have is with the provincial chapter of the Canadian Institute of Geomatics, an association of geomatics practitioners that include folks from organizations like CCOR, NRCAN Center for Mapping and Earth Observation, and of course a lot of the GIS technologists that are working in this province. They've been helping us think through the technology available to support asset management. And actually I clicked that a little too hastily. Uh, I'll take this chance to invite you to the great conference that they'll be hosting here in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've been a part of the organizing committee and there are some excellent municipal offerings in their agenda. Uh, you'll see, I've, I've noted there, there are workshops on using open source and ESRI mapping software. Uh, there's a workshop on asset management and GIS more generally. Uh, we have an emergency preparedness panel it's, it's going to be a, a good couple of days and uh, very affordable for, for us to, to take part in. Finally, uh, besides these existing 
facilities and asset management supports to towns, uh, we need to be looking ahead, paying it forward, if you will, and investing in the next generation of asset management service providers in this province. We need to build in-province capacity through things like targeted student placements. Memorial University has a small number of engineering students on offer for the winter semester. And you'll also be hearing during the conference from the College of the North Atlantic about their integrated workplace learning initiatives. Another nice uh, College of the North Atlantic example um, uh, in terms of opportunities to work with academic institutions, the GIS students in the program over in the Cornerbrook area, uh, they've been tackling municipal asset management with their capstone projects as it turns out for a number of years now. So there's, a, there's another nice opportunity to, uh, to work with a, with a partner to get some of the. And you might also think about the gaps that you may have in your own in-house resources. Uh, we all probably need to be considering hiring local and contracting specialized people periodically to fill our skills gaps. These are actual enterprise opportunities. And particularly in the COVID recovery period, it's really important to think about creating jobs here as well. So all of these are some of the most important ways that we will continue to build the SME that we need here. As ever, getting started really is the hardest part. Uh, but where asset management is concerned, you have the advantage now of a network and a community of asset management practice that didn't exist here even a few years ago. So I'll close it there. Thanks so much for, for listening and um, please do get in touch uh, if any of these partnerships and activities sound like a fit for your town and I'll you, tell you more about them. And yeah, if anybody's got any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to take those too. We do, we do have a question from uh, Sloan Beasy. Will there be any asset management reporting requirements for gas tax funding like in other provinces? Well, uh, we, we can't read the provincial government's mind, uh, but certainly the commitment under the current gas tax is that by, by the end of, of this agreement, uh, all the towns in this province will have asset management plans uh, completed or uh, fully up and running and implemented. So uh, we, where we haven't necessarily seen uh, you know, any action that is penalizing anybody at the moment for not having their asset management process started, uh, we can expect certainly that uh, down the road and certainly under the next gas tax agreement, you know, we could be taking our chances if we don't actually have these, uh, these plans in place. And moreover, you know, it's, it's really a lost opportunity. Uh, asset management planning, um, while it, it is a new practice and something that towns have to take some time in order to implement, uh, is going to pay dividends down the road. Uh, it's going to give you a better handle on, you know, upcoming issues uh, and uh, make it easier for you to justify particular uh, budgetary decisions that, that are being made, as well as to facilitate conversations with your tax base uh, regarding, you know, why it is you're making invest one area over another. And, uh, you know, in, in conversations with with a taxpayer, having some understanding of the order of magnitude of the costs and the types of things that uh, that are coming up for a town uh, can really go a long way in uh, in making the case for for the decisions that are that are necessary. We have uh, we have a huge uh, infrastructure deficit in this province. A lot of expenditures uh, that the towns have to have to assume under things like the wastewater system effluent regulations that are coming up. So. It, it's important to be able to, you know, have as much information at your service when you're you're trying to make these decisions. All right, excellent. Is there any other questions? I have a question. All right, Jerry. Thank you, Mayor Scott. And I know Kathleen, mm -hmm. we've we talked about this at different times. And I will continue to ask the question about the province's position in relation to asset management requirements, and I know they've been working on it. 
and I and I and I'm not sure at the conference if they're going to speak to this at all. But do you know if there is a place that they're at yet in relation to? Are they developing certain standardized training? Are they going to develop certain expectations of municipalities? Are they going to guide and support? Is this an issue that you know MNL and municipalities are trying to build our own? training packages and we're relying i know on you know f fcm funding as well so maybe there's a whole bunch of questions in one but uh i, I really you know i i'm convinced yeah. and I know that the asset management is the only way we can operate our infrastructure for lots of different good reasons but you know first and foremost is about just doing the things that are right you know we, you have to manage this infrastructure it's core and yeah. critical for our residents and our businesses and this is the only way this really is the only way to manage it right. So is the province, you know, are, are they moving forward with a certain, I'll say, you know, uh, mission and certain uh, energy to this? Just do you know? I, I, I think we're, we're in a kind of wait and see time frame right now. We have, of course, an, a new provincial administration. We've had a big uh, shuffling of uh, government departments, particularly, you know, the formal municipal affairs and environment now has been split up. So it's not even clear to me right now exactly where the gas tax administration uh, is falling anymore because all of the engineering staff that were formerly, uh, you know, managing that end of things are now under transportation and infrastructure. Uh, the, the Department of uh, Environment, Climate Change and Municipalities uh, clearly has significant interests in uh, having communities function better. Um, it's, uh, it's going to be moving ahead with regionalization uh, um, arrangements and, and planning. Uh, there are a lot of, of sort of um, parallel interests that, that go alongside of the asset management file, but I do think uh, this is a period where we are waiting for that asset management needs to be bumped up in, in terms of its priority and, uh, and given the resources so that Things like the asset management toolkit, which has been, you know, a significant period of time now in the in the works, uh, is going to be available to towns before the current gas tax agreement ends. Um, and and furthermore, you know, we we look at ideas around having an asset management framework for the province, which is not simply a toolkit and a bunch of guidance documents. It's actually an idea about where it is we want to find ourselves in five, 10, 15 years. And some of the about in this presentation that relate to who else is a part of the architecture, you know, that supports the practice of asset management in this province, you know, because we really have been starting from, you know, from a, a very uh, a very low level of you know practice capacity in in Newfoundland and Labrador, so uh, so closing the gap is going to be a significant challenge, particularly with only really a couple of a couple of years left. Um, you know we've we've got a lot of work to do and uh, and. Okay, oh, are you, are you done, Mr. Question, Kathleen? <laughs> We have another one from. Uh, oh Calvin yes, Edwards. yeah. Thank you though for it. <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, can Hi, you Calvin. elaborate? Can you elaborate on the student placement? Well, I'll I'll leave the uh, the information about uh, the College of the North Atlantic uh, learning opportunities uh, to their presentation because that that program is uh, is really only just being launched. So I, I can't even say that I'm familiar with all the ins and outs of it. Um, but uh, but you'll see that one in the uh, in the lineup uh, in the schedule. So make a point of it afterwards. In terms of Memorial University and the engineering placements. Uh, we have, uh, I think there are not quite a dozen students that are actually out in the field right now in the, uh, in the fall semester doing work with, with municipalities, most of, most of whom were um, uh, matched up through the Urban Municipalities Committee. 
uh, that's not the case now for the winter semester. The winter semester has a, a, a broader, uh, you know, scope for uh, for participation. Uh, you know, this was sort of our piloting uh, round. Um, the the placements in the winter are still there are still a number of, of students uh, who have not been spoken for. So we're encouraging everybody to get in touch with us so that we can log your interest and and see if we've got a map for okay. you. Um, ACOA is supporting uh, this particular program, uh, so um, it's, it's a really nice opportunity for municipalities to be involved uh, in supporting not only a young person who's, uh, who's potentially going to be able to work for our sector in years to come, but, uh, but also getting, getting necessary work done for uh, you know, uh, a relatively low cost. Thank you. I hope that answers uh, your question. <laughs> Do, uh, do anybody else have any questions? No? Uh, thank you, Kathleen. Well, I will say one thing about asset management and kind of relates to what Jerry was saying, is that uh, once you undertake your asset, your inventory, it's very eye-opening and it's kind of, uh, it could be a little daunting when you start to realize how many assets you do have regardless of the size of your town, bigger town, small town, doesn't matter. You still have a lot of assets that uh, you might really overlook. So until you actually do your inventory, it's really hard to uh, kind of get your head wrapped around it. But uh, with that said, uh, I will uh, thank you for that presentation. It was excellent. And be sure to join the next session on our agenda and go over to mnlconference.ca for a full listing, everybody that joined us, and I thank you as well. And check out the TELUS Lounge any day between nine and five, clicking on the TELUS logo on the bottom of the website. They have lots of prizes and great deals on solutions from TELUS Business. So uh, thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for joining this session. Thanks everyone.